Warhammer! I've known about Warhammer for a long time, but I only really got into it about three years ago. And since then, I've painted probably hundreds of different types of models. But this year I got really busy and actually I didn't have any time to, well, paint any. Now in the last video, I showed you how to paint the models in the start collecting box like the guide showed you. But in this video, I'm gonna take you through step by step how to get those same models looking like the box art depicts them as. So if you're following along from the previous video, you can probably skip the first few steps. But for everyone else who hasn't painted their models yet, uh, let's get started. Before we paint these guys, I'm going to add some of Citadel's technical Strickland mud. This will add some extra texture to the base and make them look a little bit more interesting. Before we can get onto the painting step, we need to prime these models. So take a bit of blue tack or tape and stick them onto some cardboard, or in this case, a long tube I had lying around. For the Terranids, I'm going to use this white primer. I find whatever color is going to make up the majority of the model, that's what you're going to usually use to prime your model. Make sure to prime in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to breathe any of this stuff in. While we're here, let's knock out the Space Marines too. Because we're going to turn these guys into Ultramarines, I'm going to use the McCrag spray paint that comes from Citadel. Make sure not to be too close to the models when you're spraying. If you are, the paint will build up and you'll lose a lot of the fine details on the model. Oh, and no priming session would be complete without priming yourself either. And with that, we got white versus blue, all ready for painting. And for me, I'm going to be using a wet palette to paint these models. First, wet the tray, then add some kitchen roll to absorb the water, and finally some baking paper, which you can find in pretty much any grocery store. We'll begin with the Tyranids. And to start, I'm going to mix some Vallejo basic skin with some medium. This will thin down the paint and turn the paint into a wash. I loaded up the brush and slopped this all over the model. And don't forget to wipe away any excess that's built up a bit too much in those recesses. Once that was dry, I mixed up some light purple into the mixture and repeated the process. I think the exact purple was Jean Steeler purple or something like that. And to clean up the parts of the model that I didn't want painted with this recess shade, I mixed some of the basic flesh paint with white and of course some water till it was a glazed consistency and painted over the raised parts of the model, making sure to leave the recesses that had absorbed the previous step. Because this is quite opaque, I went over these parts several times, building up the color. Make sure not to overload your brush and it should dry within a couple of seconds of putting on. The next bit to paint is the carapace on the back. I used some watered down Nagaroth Knight and built up the color with a few thin coats. I used a smaller brush to paint up the edges of the carapace because the edges can be a bit tricky to reach. And it's not looking too bad. And we've barely done anything. I do prefer the look of the albino Tyranid, and if I wasn't trying to copy the box art, I might have gone this direction. But we're the purple army now. Next, I used that light purple, thinned down but not too much, with some water and started to highlight the carapace, running my brush along the edges. Don't worry if the lines are thick here. The more you practice this, the better you'll get. To add a little detail, I dragged my brush down across the plates to give it that classic Tyranid insect look. Then I painted the nails with some black, taking care not to paint over the flesh washed areas. I painted the base as gray and added a very watered down black as a wash to add some extra detail. Then I mixed some white into the gray to make it lighter and dry brushed that over the top. This is where it gets a bit controversial. I used mahogany brown from Vallejo to paint the rims of the bases. I'm sorry, brown rims are far superior than black. And voila, we have some tabletop ready Tyranids. And if you want to leave these here, by all means you can. But we're gonna add more detail to these guys. And we'll start with some Doomfire Magenta. Don't be confused by its reddish appearance, it goes on a completely different color. The trick with this is to water it down with some contrast medium. I would say one part to three parts medium. Then slop it on everywhere but the gun, making sure to wipe away anywhere it's building up too much. Next, I mix some squig orange into the mixture, keeping it quite watered down and use that all over the gun. While that was drying, I took some screaming skull and cleaned up the raised parts of the model. Once dried, I took some of the Doomfire Magenta and painted that onto the end parts of the gun. 
dragging my brush from the middle to the end. This makes sure that the majority of the paint gets left at the end of the gun and therefore is darker. I took some Caribou Crimson and added that to all the exposed parts between the joints of the Tyranids. I also used it really to bring the ends of the gun to life. Only put a little bit on your brush though. Next, I took some Eshin Grey and followed the side of my brush down the edges of the claws and hooves. For the eyes, I mixed up some Imperial Fist Contrast and Troll Slayer Orange. Oh, and don't forget the eye of the gun. Yeah, that's a thing. I grabbed just a little bit of black and scratched out a little pupil on the eye of the gun. Then I took a pure white, watered it down till it was a glaze consistency and fixed up some of the areas around the eye and added it anywhere else I really wanted to highlight on the skin. The trick is to not overload the brush too much and it'll act like a wash in this consistency. Then I made a 50-50 mix of Ushamti Bone and Gene Stealer Purple for some extra highlights to the carapace. You want to really only highlight the edges of the carapace here. Try to leave the original highlight visible where you can. Comparing it to where we left off, there's a big difference. Just look how far we've come. Take that Yushapti bone and add little bits of highlights on the gun. Use the model's edge to your advantage here, dragging the side of the brush against the model. If you have too much paint or it's too watered down, it'll blob on the model. Too dry and it'll barely leave a trace. Just be patient and don't worry about making mistakes. We can always paint over them. And there we have it, our first finished Tyranid Termagant. I added a little bit of white for the gun's eye, crimson magenta for the tongue, and Ushabti bone for the teeth. And because I repeated the step with each one, they're all done. They look amazing when you see them all together. When they're all painted, nothing beats the way a horde army looks on the table. <laughs> Enough of aliens, right? Let's paint the space marine. Strangely, I started this one by doing the bases first. The same steps as the Tyranid bases, but I'll leave doing the trim until the end. Just try your best not to get it on the Space Marine. But even if you do, we can just use McCrack Blue to paint over it. While that was drying, I painted everything that isn't going to be blue black. That means the gun, anything you want to paint metal, and in between parts of the armor. Then I dry brushed the base with a lighter gray. The first proper step in painting the marine itself is to shade the recesses of the armor. Take a little bit of null oil on your brush and follow all the panel lines of the armor. Don't be afraid if the wash spills over onto other parts, as we'll neaten that up later down the line. Be patient and don't overload your brush. And breathe, which is something I realize I forget to do when I'm painting. <gasps> oh yeah, forgot to do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you made any mistakes with the wash or the black paint, now's your time to neaten up any mistakes. You can also fix up the feet here as well. Now with them all clean, let's get some metal on here. N no, not that kind of metal, although that's also good. I had a specific look in mind for the weapon, so I used Citadel's lead belcher to lay down the base coat. Also, don't do what I'm about to do here. I put too much paint on my brush and it seeped into all the holes of the gun. What I should have done is take away the excess and drag the brush across like this. See? Much better. Even if you've done this hobby for years, you can still make mistakes. Then add the metal to anywhere else you want to be metal. Usually the vents of the backpack aren't painted metal, but I'm gonna use a bit of the rule of cool here because the 30k backpacks look way cooler. Back to the wash, but this time just covering all of the metal parts we've just painted. Remember not to put too much and wipe away the excess. And then I added blue to the backpack. I created a 50-50 mix of McCrag Blue and Caligar Blue for the highlights. With these highlights, don't be afraid if they look a little chunky. Just run your brush along the edges of the armor panel, and for the places you can't, try and keep a steady hand. Planting your elbows on a table and finding a position where you can control the brush is key. You know, like your golem hunched over the pressures. This will be the most time consuming part of the process. You can also dry brush this step, but if you want those crispy edge highlights, well, there's no other way around it, unfortunately. But when you're done, the results speak for themselves. Next, I took Caligar Blue and went over everywhere I had put the first highlight, and this time made the highlight a little bit smaller. Highlighting is probably one of the hardest things to master when it comes to miniature painting, but the only way to get better at it is to practice. Don't overload your brush and try to get a point at the end of your brush. A trick that might help is twisting the brush as you wipe away the excess paint, which is why if you watch a lot of miniature painters on YouTube, their thumbs look like mine right now. 
And for the final highlight step, I mix some white into the Caligar blue and adding this highlight only to the tops of the armor where light might catch, taking extra care to be very precise. Then I took Eshen Grey and highlighted all the black parts of the model, the gun in between parts of the armor and one or two canisters on the back. Then I took a brown and painted the gun holster and the remaining satchels on the Marines. Added Agrax Earthshade to wash all the brown pieces, but I don't think I really needed to. So if you want, I'd suggest just skipping this. I ended up painting over it again anyway. I did, however, use it on the gun. Make sure there's barely any Agrax Earthshade on your brush and dab it about halfway down the nozzle. Next, I used Nagaroth Knight. Normally, I would shake the paint up, but I didn't here. The paint had separated in the lid, leaving a very watery pigment. So I used that the same way I did the Agrax, except this time dabbing it a little bit further down the gun, closer to the nozzle. After my Agrax mistake, I highlighted my gun holsters, and with the same brown, I painted the purity seals of the Space Marines. Instead of shading with these, we're going to start with the darkest color first. Now, as a rule of thumb, light paints are usually really tricky to work with. They're the first ones to separate in the pot, so I made sure before I used any of them to get them well and truly shaken up. I mixed a bit of Yushabti bone into the brown and painted everywhere but the recesses of the purity seal. Then I used pure Yushabti bone to highlight the seals, running along the edges and any folds that stuck out. And for the gold trim, I used Skull Crusher Brass. And let me tell you, painting the gold trim, oh, so good. And of course, we can't forget about the Aquila now. I found that working the gold from the center out was the best way to stop myself from accidentally painting onto the blue armor. The marine is really taking shape now. All we need is some extra little details. For the eyes, I used Mephiston Red, as well as for the purity seals. I then highlighted the eye with some orange before putting a single dot of white. And we are done! This was the first time I had really tried to paint a space marine the way the box art depicted. I painted the captain's head off screen because I really needed to be where the camera was in order to paint accurately. So the question is, how do they look when they're compared to the box art? Well, not too shabby actually. Even though I've painted a fair few Warhammer pieces in my time, I was quite apprehensive about this project, but I'm happy with how it's turned out. These space marines are now ready to take on any Xenos threat, Tyranid, or other. I had a great time doing this. There's nothing better than switching off your brain and painting a few models for an hour or so a night. Hopefully, some of these steps you found helpful. Maybe you only followed a couple of them, but at least now, getting paint onto a model doesn't seem so daunting. So if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, bye-bye.